Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and it's part eight of the Racer's Wedge. And we're getting close. I don't know if we're going to finish it this episode, but we're probably going to get close, if not complete. And yes, yes, it looks like it's all put together, but it's not. Especially the interior is lacking. Before I can get onto the interior, I have to finish painting the exterior. And some of you may have been wondering about just exactly what blue accents were going to be. Now the whole top of the deck is going to be blue, same blue that's on the wheels, and this inner area here it's going to be blue. The very front of the cat or the of the body is going to be blue. Not that you'll see that much of it. So what kind of highlights am I going to be putting on here in blue? I'm going to put some flames on it. I'm going to put some blue flames on it. Some of you are probably going, Oh, no! And some of you are saying, Cool. Now, I'll be the first person to say that flames on a van are ridiculous. And that's probably why I'm going to do it. What I'm going to do, and I've never painted flames on anything before. Uh, the flames are basically, let's just get something to point with. They're maybe going to come up about halfway up the hood. They're going to come back a little farther here. And then they will restart here. So there'll be some flames kind of licking back to there. And those flames are going to be painted this blue. And then what I'm going to do is, after I've painted the flames basically that blue, the same blue that Natasha used over here, this metallic blue, I'm going to try to frost it onto just the very ends of the flames. Just the, the pointy bits. So whether I can pull this off or not, I don't know, but it's basically going to be the first thing that we work on on the van this week. So we get a chunk of old sign material, a piece of plastic, and it's actually gotten warped because my uh, charger for my laptop was sitting on it, so it's a little warped. I'm going to give this a coat of the yellowy-orange that I'm using on the, uh, the racer's wedge. And then I'm going to practice doing my flame effect on this before actually doing it on the, the model itself. Because I, I just thought, you know what? <laughs> Better to see if it looks like crap here than to do it on the model. I've been a little under the weather this week, so I haven't been very motivated. And I didn't realize that I hadn't actually taken a picture of this after I painted it. The yellowy orange there. Whatever it is, the yellowy orange under there. And you will see that hopefully in a few minutes. And hopefully you can see it. You can see the masking tape that I cut in the shape of hopefully flames. And then I used the same blue that I used on the wheels of our racer's wedge. So what I'm going to do next is I've got some Arctic Blue Metallic. My plan is, is to use my fine airbrush. And I just want to airbrush just just the line where the tips of the flames are. So maybe of the area that's not covered, I want to spray maybe a third of it at the most. So that way it goes from a nice solid blue to a metallic darker blue, and then it will be the orange. So the idea is either there are blue flames licking up along the side of the, the vehicle. I know flames are normally orange, but we're changing this up a little bit. So there you can see I've put the metallic blue on and I actually ended up doing about 50% of the, the total depth. One of these decisions you make in the heat of the moment. I'm not liking that bleed through we've got going on there. That's well, looking pretty disastrous. Masking tape pulled off some of the paint off of the sign material. Although I'm thinking that's probably it actually pulled off the original paint down here. 
a little bit of bleed through from the metallic. But overall, what's going on is pretty much what I'm going to want. It's just going to be a matter of making sure it doesn't bleed. All right, folks, I did some soul searching. And yes, it's true, I felt sick all week. Not really sick, just run down, no energy. But what I found was I just was not enthusiastic about cutting all those flames in a masking tape, putting them on, and and committing to a process I wasn't sure was really going to give the effect I wanted. So now what I'm going to do is there's going to be a wide blue stripe going up the middle, and then there's going to be two smaller ones going down the sides. And I'm going to be using the medium gloss blue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the metallic blue and I'm just going to feather right along the edge where the masking tape is. What we'll have is a blue stripe that gets darker towards the edges where it meets up with the yellow. And I think that will look pretty good. One thing I've learned is if, if something is supposed to be your hobby and you're dreading doing part of it, don't do it. This is supposed to be for enjoyment. So, no flames. Going to be some stripes. And this is basically how it will be on the sides. Once again, we'll have orange here and here. And then we'll have the two-tone blue going up the middle. The main part of the body up here is all going to be the medium blue. And... This is going to be medium blue, mind you, you're not going to see most of it, but the idea is, is, you know, the very fronts will be medium blue. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to try something a little, a little different. And I'm going to actually spray gloss coat all over to try to seal the edges of the tape so they don't get any bleed through from the blue. We'll see how that works. The only reason I'm using the gloss coat is it's already glossy and um, my dull coat is Tester's lacquer coat, which will take like a week to dry. And I've already taken much longer doing this, this step on this project than I intended. Our medium blue has been applied and what I'm going to be doing is just feathering the metallic blue just at the top and bottom of these stripes and then that way where the stripe comes up against the the orange it will actually be darker and more of a metallic that is the plan at least yeah, yeah, I know. I probably should have done this big reveal of the paint scheme on time lapse with pulling off the masking tape, but I was actually afraid that the uh, they'd be seeing all kinds of paint having got underneath the masking tape and everything. So there's the cab. That's how that looks. Now we know it's not the the flames I mentioned earlier, but I just wasn't feeling, and this kind of came up as as an alternate. You know, it kind of caught my imagination. And I think it looks pretty good. And the body of our wedge has the same sort of thing going. And there's the other side. And the front is just straight blue, as is the top. And my plans for these parts here is I think I'm going to apply a wash just to highlight the tread pattern and then I'm probably going to dry brush the the tops of the ridges going up the idea is, is that as they've put vehicles up and down on them you know a little bit of the paint is worn off so there's that big step done is the the overall paint is done now I can get working on you know painting the, the marker lights and things like that and I can finally, finally get to work on the interior. Speaking of the interior, I obviously need some seats. So I, I had a little bit of debate. I did have the, the, the seats that came with the Stinger version of the van were really, really race-like. 
And I actually had uh, a seat, I think it was from my dad's uh, Pinto model that was kicking around in my spare, spare parts. That was a racing seat as well. And I considered maybe putting a racing seat for the driver and then a more plain Jane one for the passenger. And then, I don't know, I just thought people would look at it and think it was silly that they were mismatched. So I went with the generic seats that came with the Sunrunner. So as you can see, if I can ever pull one off, we now have a mold for seats. So we can get it off. There we go. Pull that off. So there we are. Now there's a bit of an undercut here, which gives us the, the back curve of the seat. So I'm thinking this probably needs maybe another day to finish, finish curing, especially this little tab here. Tab's gone. Now the seat originally of course, was molded all in one piece by MPC. And what I did is I, I cut it and then I blocked this off. So when I cast it, it'll give me two parts that I can glue together. I'm starting the interior and as you can see, I haven't painted this area here. Or rather, I haven't painted it there in the last 40 years or so. I have started painting by basically all the areas that are going to be where the instruments are going to be, I gave them a gloss black. And then there's a recess that goes around there. And I put some flat black in there. So this is going to be a darker brown. This is going to be a lighter brown by the time I'm done. And the floor, I've painted the wheel wells with some German gray to represent rubber. Same thing with the with the pedal blocks and this this mat here and the sides of the wheel wells and eventually the engine cover is going to be painted the same slightly glossy brown I think it's NATO brown by Tamiya the idea is I want that to look like it has a bit of a sheen to it to contrast to the carpet that's going to be on the floor I finished painting my dashboard and this, as I probably mentioned earlier, is to me a NATO brown. This other color here that's a bit lighter and a bit shinier, that's the NATO brown with some gloss white tossed into it just to lighten it up a bit. All of these dark areas here are gloss testers paint. And then I've just, the, the dials I dry brushed with some white paint. And then everything else had a touch of silver paint on it. Um, they're very faint, so I was just hoping, just to give the impression that there was something there, than rather to uh, to highlight every little bulge. And if we look at it, you can see there's just a little bit of nibbling away I did here, because I test fit the windshield in, and it tended to want to keep the dashboard from sitting in really, really well, so I just nibbled away at the corners of the dashboard there. Here's the floor in the inside of the firewall and you can see I've pretty much painted the top of the ashtray silver and I've painted the pedals and this little silver object down here that's the high beam switch. I'm not sure but I think Ford was one of the last companies that stuck with having the high beam switch on the floor. So that's my only explanation as to what that little dot is. But the Econoline certainly is of the right year to have still had that. I've put a little bit of, actually this is uh, the Sharpie silver on the Ford letters. They're not quite as crisp as I would have liked, but without basically chiseling everything down to bare plastic and starting over, I don't think I could have gotten it any more crisp than that. The radiator casting has been painted a semi-gloss black. You can see how that's been mounted in there. And once again, it doesn't come all the way to the very top of this cavity, but we're not going to see that when we get the, the grill in place. 
I'm finally ready to assemble the seats. Here's the mold that they came out of. And these are the bottom of the seats. Now it was easier just to cut the original kit part apart and then cast it in two pieces. So here's the bottoms. And here is the tops. Now the one on the right there was a couple of nasty air bubbles that I had to fill. And there's a few air bubbles in the back. I think I used a little bit too much hardener. I just put a little bit of Tamiya filler on there and took care of those. I've glued the seats together and I've also glued a base onto the seat that will help to locate it onto the floor right there. And I just felt that it looked a little too low to the ground without this base on it. So I think I'm going to actually glue these onto the base or onto the floor before I paint and that way I've got something a nice firm base to hold it in place while I do the painting. I've glued the seats in place and I gave them a coat of testers rust although it ended up coming out with a bit more sheen than I had originally intended although they could be vinyl seats so I'm just going to leave it as is. Now as special as this accidental chroming looks and if you if you didn't see that particular episode when I took the resin out of the mold well actually it goes back even further when I put the original part in the mold and then removed it a lot of the original chrome came off I wasn't too upset because I can always put some bare metal foil on that anyway at some later date so all of this chrome was transferred to the mold then, when I put the resin in the mold and I pulled it out, I found that all the chrome that had come off the original part had been transferred onto the new part. And as cool as that looks, I'm going to basically bare metal foil the whole thing, and then I'm going to um, basically the, the, the headlight surrounds are going to be painted black, and I'm going to be applying some washes, some heavy washes, in order to pick out the middle of the grill that should actually be, you know, transparent. There, that looks a whole lot better. It pretty much looks as good as, uh, as any part you'd get off the sprue. But it's not good enough yet. You can see in this shot I've painted flat black around the headlights. And I actually would have preferred to use a very dark gray, but the only really dark grays I have are Tamiya, and I was afraid they weren't really going to stick that well to the bare metal foil. So my next step, my next step is going to be to do a wash. Now I will be using a Tamiya wash for this, and it's going to be very heavy because I want pre basically all the, the lower areas in this grill to be almost black. So the dark gray wash is dry, and this is how our our smiley face turned out. I think it looks pretty good considering that it was basically copied from the original part using resin. I used testers bright chrome on the windshield surround but on the wiper blades and arms themselves I used uh, Humbrol gun metal just because I wanted it to be metallic but I wanted it to be somewhat discolored because it always seems like the metal that they use for the windshield wiper arms is quick to rust and discolor. This is pretty much our dashboard completed. And on this side you can see, hopefully, if I turn it right, that I've added a turn signal stock. And on the other side we see the gear shift lever. Now both of these were made just by using some straight pins. Now normally for the gear shift lever I like using a fancier straight pin, the type that has like a really big head on it, just because usually the, the gear shift lever does have a fairly large knob on the end of it. Now what I did, because I didn't feel like getting in the car and going someplace and buying the ones with the larger heads on them, is I just put down a puddle of super glue on a, on a paint lid and I just swirled it around through that and it was a medium gap filling. I just swirled it around through that 
two or three times, leaving maybe a half hour in behind, and that builds up the head of the pin substantially more. There you can see it's a little bit thicker and heavier. And the steering wheel, I didn't have a steering wheel for this model. I did have one with the um, with the race van, but the one for the Sunrunner, it disappeared. So what I did is I actually took this steering wheel out of a an old Bronco model that I've yet to resurrect, which is probably kind of short-sighted because when I get around to doing that one, I'm probably going to be like, oh no, what'd I do? It is a correctly shaped Ford truck steering wheel from late 70s, early 80s. So it was appropriate, so I just basically stuck it in there. So this is this is ready to go inside our cab. You can see by the glint that I've got the back window cut. But before I mount it, since we can see the back end of the or the back side of the cab so well, I don't want to just have the the glass sitting in there because it'll be obvious that there's no weather stripping or framing or anything on the inside. Now I've been dreading having to do the framing with the window in place with all the cab and everything in the way. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a weather stripping frame, apply it to the glass, and then I'm going to drop the whole thing into the back of the cab now that I know that it fits. So hopefully this goes a little ways to explain what I was trying to explain earlier. So this is the window material and the same half round evergreen styrene that I used for the outside of the cab, I've basically framed directly onto the glass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this weather stripping uh, a rubber color and I'm going to do it right here on the workbench. And then I'm going to just like put this right into the back of the cab from the inside. And then that way my weather stripping and everything will be done on the inside. And I'll paint the weather stripping on the back before I put the glass in and that'll simplify things as well. I'm hoping if I mask this, I won't have any unfortunate accidents. So you know that's not gonna work out. And then here's the window itself. Now normally I would wait much longer before putting the windshield in to a model. However, I've already test fit this once, and it does in fact fit very, very well. The problem is, and if we flip this over, oops, there's my back window, is the windshield actually is an extremely tight fit, and it has to get past all this sidewall detail first. And there's actually some notches. Let's see, I'm trying to find a good view here. There we go. It has to get past the sidewall detail and then sit inside this little um, inside this recess right here. And I've already managed to have it in once and get it out. I'm fully expecting it is going to scratch some of my paint on the inside here. But I can always touch that up. But that's one of the reasons it's got to go in sooner rather than later because I'm going to have to be able to do the touch-up. And the soul of another one of my children bites the dust. The windshield actually went in really, really good. It's a solid enough fit that I'm not going to bother gluing it. And it's funny, the first time I put the dashboard in as, as a test fit, it really didn't want to sit in there very well. This time it's sitting in there almost perfectly. So I'm kind of surprised, but uh, relieved nonetheless. Now, if we look carefully, you can see there's some very slight blemishes on here. And I was debating trying to polish these things out. But we have to remember, this van came from a junkyard. That's the whole premise of it. So as, matter, as, as much as our two friends have tarted it up, it still came from a junkyard. So I don't want this thing to be absolutely perfect. 
I want this to be a, ro a working truck that they've put together that, you know, they show some pride and it gets the job done for them, but it's not their absolute super pride and joy reason for waking up in the morning. This gets their car to the car shows. So I think I'm going to leave it with those very small warts and all. Okay. That's that back window glued in with a little bit of white glue. So I'm going to have to set this aside and let it dry. Now that my back window is securely glued in there, hopefully, I'm going to put my floor up inside. This is probably going to be the second last time I do it. I just want to make sure everything is all happy and, and getting along and agreeing. And then I'm going to take it out because I've got just a couple more detail things I want to do to it. But it's I know it's going to be difficult to get it in just because of the amount of resin and how many things are fairly inflexible. But I want to put it together just so I can get a sense as to what um, additional details I'm going to be putting inside. Well, success in getting the floor in without breaking anything. It looks like I'm going to have to put a little bit of glue here and apply some clamping force because it doesn't seem to want to sit just perfectly in there. But I think I've accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish for this particular episode. Um, we've got the bodywork painted. I've got the interior pretty much built. Just a couple more details. So... Just a few more things to do and do the final assembly. Well, there's our cab. Pretty much 90% there. So, thanks for watching Dan's Model Works this week, and until next time, just keep on modeling.